Hi, welcome to the phone arena video review of the Nokia E5, the latest in Nokia's E series of handsets. Following on from the success of the E72, the E5 has a QWERTY keypad, a 5 megapixel camera with flash, and a 2.4 inch QVGA screen. However, it comes in at a lower price point, and so has a predominantly plastic body and no front facing video camera. The screen on the Nokia E5 is nice and bright and comes in at 2.4 inches with a resolution of 320 by 240 pixels. In turn, it isn't the sharpest we've seen, however, does the job for most business documents and basic web browsing. The landscape orientation makes it great for running searching mail on. Underneath the screen are two soft keys, a shortcut to the home and a shortcut to messaging, as well as a call and an end button. In between all this is a five-way D-pad. The keyboard itself is rubberized with each key being individual. It feels really nice once you get used to it. However, when you first use it, as each key is only really raised in the center, a specific point has to be pressed. So if you have larger hands, you can press multiple keys at once. Around the phone, there are very few buttons. In fact, all you'll really find is the volume rocker up the top of the right hand side. The volume rocker is quite annoying as it isn't sufficiently raised and especially the top one we found extremely hard to press. On the top of the phone is a micro USB port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a two millimeter Nokia charging port. Around the base of the sides of the phone are two battery release buttons. The metal battery cover is a really nice touch. Despite the phone being predominantly plastic, it does feel very nice and solid and the battery cover only adds to this. Remove the battery and you will find a micro SD card slot and a SIM card slot. The overall build quality of the E5 is pretty great. Sure, it's plastic and it doesn't feel quite as luxurious as the E72, but considering the feature spec, it feels absolutely wonderful. Solid, heavy enough, and still manages to keep a slimline form factor. Symbian Series 60 version 3 has been on numerous iterations of E Series phones. With minimal change having taken place throughout these iterations, it's really looking dated now. It's functional nevertheless, with app support links on your home screen, links to email and various other functions, and an extremely familiar menu. You'll spend no time getting used to it, as finding your way around any Symbian phone is pretty much a piece of cake. Having said that, Phones nowadays look good at the same time, and this just looks dated. When we go into the menu, we can see standard links to calendar, contacts, logs, OV maps, the OV store, media, internet, messaging, control panel office, help, and applications. As this is a business phone, we'll take a look at the office add-ons. Quick Office, the full version is on board. This enables editing and creation of various Office documents and Excel charts, for example. There is also access to Lotus Notes Traveler, Adobe PDF, and a Bloomberg application that comes pre-installed. Series 60 has found increasing support from app developers, and so you should find a range of apps that are actually very useful in the OV store that wouldn't have been there, say, five months ago. But having said that, this still doesn't make up for the fact it looks extremely dated. Music support on the phone is really good. With the standard Series 60 music player, it's easy to get to your tracks and to play them. The 3.5mm headphone jack makes for good quality output, especially considering it's a business device. This makes the E5 a real all-rounder, which we were really pleased about. With onboard Wi-Fi, 3G, and a GPS, connectivity options on the phone are great. The E5's web browser, as standard, is Symbian Series 60's. This does a good job, as you can see, of displaying pages. Though, 
everything is where it should be and it has got basic flash support. Having said that, we did find for a non-touchscreen phone, Opera's browser is more intuitive as it enables you to get a page overview much more quickly. Nevertheless, the Symbian Series 60 browser was snappy and worked well in the background without slowing the phone down too much. Once web pages are loaded, they're displayed well and you have a form of overview as you can see in the bar on the top. The other area the E5 excels is in its GPS. With OV Maps on board, and Google Maps downloadable for a less data intensive map experience. We really liked the fact that the satellites were found so quickly on the E5. It made it actually really usable as a replacement unit for a GPS, which we can't say about most phones. To wrap up, the Nokia E5 is a really well made phone. It feels solid, has a great feature spec with Wi-Fi and GPS on board as well as a 5 megapixel camera. And the fact it has a 3.5mm headphone jack and Symbian standard music player means it's an all-rounder, great for business and great for play. The main thing letting down the Nokia E5 is the Symbian Series 60 interface. It is dated, and nothing is going to get around this. If you can get past this, and you're a business user, then we'd probably say it's one of the best value-for-money business handsets out there. If you were looking for something cheaper and you weren't uh, needing the app support, for example, that Series 60 provided, you may look into the Nokia C3. Alternatively, if you're looking to get out of the Nokia universe, then the BlackBerry Bold 9700 or 9800 to be released soon would be other alternatives in this form factor. Thanks, this has been Phone Arena and you've been watching the video review of the Nokia E5. For more on this and other handsets, please visit phonearena.com.